coming up on AC247. Two huge cases go in front of the Supreme Court and could change student debt forever. What borrowers need to know. Plus, controversial Governor Ron DeSantis is releasing a new book. What the pages reveal about his roadmap for a possible 2024 presidential bid. And shocking revelations from the head of Fox News about the 2020 election and all of those false election claims. Hey there, welcome to AC247. I'm your host, Lamar Baldwin. This week, advocacy groups are gathered outside the Supreme Court as justices inside consider President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. The groups are holding rallies in favor of student debt cancellation. The program would give millions of Americans up to $20,000 in debt relief, but it's been on hold since last year. In one case before the court, six Republicans-led states argue the Department of Education doesn't have the legal authority to forgive the debt. But advocates, including teacher unions, say the debt relief is earned. So we can stand here to show the justice of the Supreme Court that we need relief and we need relief now. And we need to let them know again that today is a great day to cancel student debt. Yeah. Yeah. And we will not be subdued because of some sham lawsuits and partisan politics. We, as the American people, deserve this student debt cancellation. Currently, federal student loan payments are still on pandemic-related pause. A decision isn't expected to be handed down until June. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is taking a step forward in his 2024 presidential run. He wrote in a new book, The Courage to Be Free, that hit shelves this week. As the Advocate Channel's Jeff Zelini tells us, it lays out his political ambitions. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis inching ever closer to a highly anticipated presidential launch with a new campaign style video. Freedom is worth fighting for and a new book that serves as a roadmap for a potential 2024 Republican primary. In The Courage to be Free, obtained today by CNN, DeSantis plants his flag as a leading alternative to Donald Trump and pushes back against the former president's often made assertion that he alone is responsible for the governor's success. I do not think Republican primary voters are sheep who simply follow an endorsement from a politician they'd like without any individual analysis but I do believe that a major endorsement can put a candidate on the radar of GOP voters in a way that boosts a good candidate's prospects. And I stood for what I believe was right. He said it was his debate performance in his 2018 race that led to his come from behind victory. As the Republican presidential field takes shape, DeSantis is making an early splash. Florida is where woke goes to die holding up his Florida record as a blueprint for a national platform, like the Parental Rights and Education Act, which critics have dubbed the Don't Say Gay Bill, that led to his feud with the Disney Corporation. Today, the corporate kingdom finally comes to an end. There's a new sheriff in town and accountability will be the order of the day. The governor went to Walt Disney World's backyard to sign a law today effectively punishing the entertainment giant for speaking out against the DeSantis agenda. He uses that fight to bolster his view that big business, a longtime ally of the GOP, has become too woke in his characterization and should be called out by a new class of Republican leaders. Corporate America has become a major protagonist in battles over American politics and culture. The battle lines almost invariably find large, publicly traded corporations lining up behind leftist causes, he writes, adding, old guard corporate republicanism is not up to the task at hand. As Florida governor, he's become a combative figure in the culture wars, for which he offers no apologies. It's always be on offense, because if you're not on offense, then you're basically a sitting duck, and you let these people come and just take pot sacks at you all the time. Fox News and the Fox Corporation are defending their actions during the 2020 election, even as head of the company acknowledges some hosts endorsed false claims. 
In a deposition, Rupert Murdoch, the chairman of Fox Corporation, admitted that hosts including Jeannie Pirro, Sean Hannity, and former host Lou Dobbs promoted falsehoods about the election being stolen. Murdoch said he believed no fraud had occurred in the election. The deposition is part of Dominion's $1.6 billion defamation suit against Fox News. Fox News and his parent company are alleging the on-air assertions were taken out of context. Attorneys for Fox say it should not be held liable for those hosts' claim. The Department of Agriculture is calling for change in the long-standing history of discrimination against black farmers. The USDA's report details 30 items to extend opportunities to farmers of color and assist with the long-standing discrimination against them. In more detail, the report calls for equal access and greater representation in USDA programs and more accountability for the agency to follow through on those changes. The report especially calls for diversity on county committees, where local elected farmers make decisions on how federal funds are spent. Tesla, Twitter, and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is now the richest person in the world. Again. He regains the title after two short months. According to Bloomberg, Musk is worth $187.1 billion. This puts the Twitter CEO a couple of billion dollars ahead of his luxury brand, LVMH CEO Bernard Arnault. President Biden says history matters and black history matters. He made that declaration during a reception for the Black History Month. Top administration officials, including Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and several black lawmakers were among the hundreds in attendance. The president also paid tribute to the Divine Nine, the historically black fraternities and sororities. Vice President Harris, who is an AKA, spoke about how much black history matters. And let us all be clear, we will not, as a nation, build a better future for America by trying to erase America's past. As, uh, as he just, Dwayne just referenced, uh, he recently... The heroes of the past, as well as those who currently... Care. History matters. Yes. History matters, and black history matters. Yes. Look, the poor have a ladder up, the middle class do well, and the wealthy always do well when everybody else does well. So I ain't worried about them. And a purpose. He thought there should be a Black History Month. First guy to do it, but I'm the best of my knowledge. And it's turned into Black History. Florida recently blocking a new advanced course on African-American studies from being taught in the state's high schools. President Biden said, quote, I can't just choose to learn what we want to know. We learn what we should know. We have to learn everything, the good, the bad, the truth, and who we are as a nation. Actress Kiki Palmer is a new mom. Palmer gave birth to her first child, Leotis Leo Ardrellington Jackson. The Emmy Award winning actress and her partner, Darius Jackson, posting a series of videos and pictures on Instagram. The couple say they chose that name because their son was born during Black History Month and needed a name to match. We are celebrating Black History Month. Today we want to celebrate American writer and historian Carter G. Woodson, the father of Black History Month. Woodson would never see a full Black History Month. He founded the first Negro History Week in 1926. This was timed around birthdays for Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Woodson founded the Association for African American Life and History and he was the second African-American person to receive a doctorate from Harvard. He is most noted for writing The Miseducation of the Negro. Woodson's Black History Week was not extended to a full month until 1976, more than 16 years after his death. Thank you for joining us for AC 24-7. For more content that advocates to you, go to AdvocateChannel.com and make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate Channel, I'm Lamont Baldwin.